answering your pricing question for Floris and passing along my two favorite shortcuts when it comes to pricing in your flower business. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how I went from feeling like a total fraud, complete imposter, to building a thriving, successful, profitable flower business. Before we jump into all the goodness today, I would love for you guys to throw in to the comments section below, chuck in your favorite money emoji. Now I know that not many people in our industry will actually talk about how to make money as a floral designer, but that is my whole reason for being here. And this video is actually part two of a two part <laughs> series all about giving you my favorite shortcuts and my favorite little tidbits in terms of how to price with confidence. So if you missed part part one of this little pricing fiesta and I will also link it below so that you can play catch up and really set the foundation for your success and set the foundation for you being able to price with confidence. Just quickly though, before I share my pricing shortcuts, I just want to say hi. <laughs> my name's Kathleen. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things marketing, money, and managing your mindset specifically for floral designers and floral designers who are on a mission to build a profitable business. And pricing is one of my favorite topics to talk about because it's where I have had so many of the aha moments in my business. First things first, my pricing shortcuts. One of the things that became a real challenge for me when we were having a team, we were working with freelancers, is that personally, that the industry standard approach to pricing, very specifically like the math that we are presented with, I found it complicated. Now, I know it's not actually that complicated, but particularly when it came to weddings and events, I found it so open to interpretation. And when you feel like a total imposter and a complete fraud, of course, you're going to choose the lowest number in the equation. I was like, no, I cannot <laughs> allow my doubt and my uncertainty in my own ability to impact the profitability of my business. This is when I actually started to learn and pay attention, get the kind of inside scoop in terms of how other florists price. And this is where I learned my two favorite pricing shortcuts. So when it comes to doing everyday flowers, the traditional formula that is taught is take your wholesale amount, multiply it times three, and then add 30%. I am so impatient. I couldn't even do that level of math. So a pretty close approximation, a good shortcut to use is just take your wholesale amount and multiply it times four. On the other hand, if you are focused on weddings and events, and this one I actually learned from Holly Chapel, and I am so grateful for this one because I find like the little like squishy points in this equation, I'm like, nah, there's too much leeway for me to mess this up. Because I'm like, when do you choose three and a half? When do you choose four? When do you choose 30%? When do you choose 50%? And should I be choosing like 30 seven percent. What? Holly Chapel actually taught me this shortcut and I am like so grateful. Now instead of going wholesale times three and a half to four plus 30 to 50 percent all you need to do is go wholesale times five or if you're doing a design that requires even more premium product or more expertise go wholesale times six. It's such a better shortcut like there is just no room for self-doubt in here. Even if you let your self-doubt lead with wholesale times five, most of the time you can kind of get away with it. But then you can build with confidence to be like, yes, this is a specialist design. This requires even more expertise. So I'm going to price wholesale times six. The other thing that I'm just gonna throw in here is don't assume that these pricing models are the upper limit. Nobody's walking around telling you that you can't charge even more than that. The industry standard approach to pricing is just the beginning. So my friends, if you are walking around with years of expertise and you know that you have the capacity to be charging even more, do it. In so many other industries, they are charging wholesale product times six, wholesale product times 10, and God knows how much even more than that. So the industry standard approach to pricing can just be the beginning. One of the most common questions I get asked is, Kathleen, do you include your wholesale and your sundries in that wholesale allotment? And or do you mark up your flowers and your foliages at different percentages? And the answers are very simple. 
I'm very impatient and I don't have time to have complicated equations, particularly if you're trying to train your staff, make the pricing simple. And I have the point of view that your sundries and your hard goods go into the wholesale allotment. I also believe that you should be charging the same markup with your flowers as you do your foliage. Yes, I totally understand the argument that your foliage tends to last longer than your flowers and that your hard goods and sundries have a longer shelf life than fresh product does. I totally agree. However, my perspective was it was too complicated. And the way that I sold myself on this idea was A, I want it to be simple, but B, you can't have the bouquet of flowers without the foliage and without the hard goods. You literally need to have all of the pieces of the puzzle. So let's just make it really simple and just mark everything up the same. Now, if you have a pricing formula that you like and you're making money, you've got profit and everything's running tickety-boo, I don't know why you're watching this video. But for the rest of us who are walking around feeling like total imposters and frauds, we tend to want to overcomplicate the pricing because the more complicated the pricing can be, the more time we'll spend like moving all the numbers around and massaging things and then we won't go out there and give the client the quote and just deal with the discomfort of being told that they found somebody cheaper. Please, please, please do your future self a favor and just give yourself permission that pricing can be super simple. And yes, everything just goes into the allotment called wholesale. Next question, Kathleen, what do you do with higher items? What amount do you tend to charge them out at? The rule that I was taught, which I find super helpful, is if you are hiring out items that are fairly standard, like fairly replaceable, I was taught that you charge them out at one third of the retail price. And the goal being that by the time you hire them out three times, you've paid off the retail price and then you start making just pure profit off of it. The two other things to keep in mind is that if you're hiring out more interesting, more hard to find items and the replacement value is higher, don't be afraid to charge a premium. The other thing to remember, and this was one thing that I just did not pay attention to <laughs> for a really long time, but don't forget to also charge labor to help you actually clean the containers in terms of actually prepping everything. Like if you're using candles and you need to clean them, we all know that that's a complete nightmare job, but just making sure that when you're providing your quote or when you're sorting through the actual hours and costs in terms of making these jobs happen, that you account for that. So that the next time you go to do a job and you need those candles that they're actually cleaned and you're not totally resentful and having to do it the night before. And the last question that I get asked all the time is, hey, Kathleen, how much should I be charging out for my hourly rate? Now, this one often surprises people. So back in my corporate days, the general rule that we used to follow, what I was taught when I was pretty young was, you take somebody's salary and you multiply it by two and a half times three and that becomes their hourly rate. So if the going rate for a florist is $40, an hour. When it comes to you providing a quote to your customer in terms of an hourly rate, you will want to be charging out your hourly rate or a freelancer that you're paying $40 an hour to, you're going to want to be charging them out at $100 to $120 an hour. Now, most florists scream when I suggest that, but that's okay. It works and it works really, really well. It's actually a fairly traditional markup model that's used in lots of different industries and I know it's not something that's talked about in floristry very much because we are all very scarcity driven in this industry. However, if you know that the going rate for a florist in your area is $40 an hour, then the amount that you're going to be charging out per hour on a quote is $100 to $120 per hour. Now, when you're putting quotes together for your clients, and this is one of the things that does take time, so be patient with yourself. If you're putting your first quote together, one of the best exercises to do is just take a best guess, like literally sit down, grab a pen and a piece of paper and just think through how the day might run and think through how many hours or how much time you might need to pack the van, unpack the van, set up at the reception, set up for the ceremony, clean everything up, come back and do the strike or the bump out later that night or the next day, whatever the rules are. Now, I know everybody wants a quick fix in terms of like, tell me exactly how much to charge on a quote, but it totally depends on the job. And it's exactly like if you were talking to a tradie or a contractor, they're gonna be like, how long is a piece of string? So the same thing applies in floristry. 
And this is where the more years you're in business and the more expertise that you have, the faster you'll be able to have a best guess and the more accurate you'll become when you're putting those quotes together. But when I was first starting out, I literally would grab a pen and a piece of paper and I would just think, okay, so I think it's gonna take me half an hour to get there. Let's assume I need an hour to pack the vehicle, half an hour to unpack, two hours to set up for the ceremony, two hours to do the reception. I would literally go through the math and work backwards. And then you would charge that hourly rate per hour per florist. Now, if you're in Australia or you want to adopt some of the amazing labor rules in Australia, and I highly recommend it, we are required by law to pay people a premium rate after hours, on weekends, and on Sundays and public holidays. So your hourly rate might vary, and definitely you get to charge a premium if you're doing a strike at 11 o'clock at night. So yeah, there is a lot of math involved, but when it comes to just marking up somebody standard, if you're paying them $40 an hour, you're going to be charging out between $100 and $120 an hour. The number one thing that I want you to take away from this training is I want you to give yourself permission that pricing can be simple. I spent so long, like years, doubting my pricing that I was missing the opportunity and understanding that the gap that actually needed to be filled was understanding marketing and sales, the power of branding and really getting into some of the nitty gritty of things like SEO and Google ads and how to get found on Instagram and all of the tactics and strategies that you need to learn when it comes to marketing. So I want to give you permission to just decide that pricing can be simple. Because once you make the decision that pricing is simple, you free up so much energy to actually learn about marketing and sales. And that's how you bridge the gap between attracting the low value clients who are always gonna tell you, wow, that's expensive, and being able to attract the right kinds of customers to have them just say, sounds awesome, how do I pay? Again, I will also remind you that if this is the first pricing video that you've watched, go back and watch part one so that you can understand really some of the fundamental mindset shifts I made when it came to pricing with confidence. And I would love to hear from you. Give me your one aha moment from this video in the comments below. I would love to hear from as many of you as possible because I just want to know that this has been helpful. And I want you to go out there and I want you to raise your pricing, get your pricing sorted, and then get to work learning more about marketing and sales. And as always, my friends, have the most amazing week. Please take care of yourself and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.